Okay. I'm having a really hard time with my lighting, with everything. I don't know what it is, but it's just off right now. <laughs> I'm just really struggling. So we're just going to have to work with it, and that's what it's going to look like. So, like I said, no, I didn't say that yet. So I'm actually doing two different videos today. Um, two of they were requested, so one of them was a cut crease, and one of them is how to do a highlight and contour. So um, I want them to be more in depth, so that is why I'm doing two different videos. So in this one, I won't be putting on any eye makeup, so it might be kind of weird, but it's more just about the face. And then the next one, my face will already be done, and um, it's really just going to be about how to do a cut crease. So if you're watching one of these without the other one, um, just check the other video for the rest of the look. And of course, now that I'm filming, my dog has woken up. She's woken up and she's going crazy. So that's just how it's going to go, I guess. So one really important part of your face makeup is the primer, especially if you're going to be doing like contour and highlight and using a lot more products than usual because I feel like if you don't prime, um, like everything you put on top of your face isn't going to sit correctly. Um, this just gives you the perfect base to work with. You really want everything that goes on top, especially if you're using multiple products, to go on smoothly with each other and really melt together and not um, stick to your face or anything like that. So I think primer is super important. So I just used the NYX Hydro Touch Primer Base and it's very affordable. I think this is about $7. I've already like used a ton of it and I just got it. <laughs> but it's because I love it so much so that's basically all I use lately. Um, it doesn't have to be something super expensive and I would definitely suggest using a a primer that's going to work with your skin type so I have dry skin so that's why I'm using something that's hydrating if you have oily skin I would use something that's mattifying if you have a lot of pores that you can see I would use a pore filler so just do a little bit of research and figure out what one is gonna work best for you because that's really gonna help everything that you put on your face really blend together nicely so so because um, I kind of want this to be like an intense contour highlight how-to video, I think I'm going to go with a more intense, what's the word I'm looking for, foundation. So I'm going to use my Kat Von D Locket foundation, look at how gross it is. Um, I really do love this stuff, but it's not really meant for my dry skin type, it is pretty matte and it's very thick. So. I mix it with this NYX Total Control Drops. Now people say this is matte, and it I guess it is, but it doesn't feel matte, and it's so lightweight that I think this works for dry skin too, because it works for me. So I just mix that in, so that way it kind of thins out um, the Kat Von D foundation. And so I mix that together with a brush, and I like to go in on my face with this before I use a beauty blender, so I kind of just like paint it on and you can see um, there's lots of streaky lines and things like that, but that is okay because when you go over it with a beauty blender, it helps blend everything together and it takes away all of those streaks. So um, I like to go on with the brush first because I feel like it, it gives me the most product so that way I can do a really nice thick coverage but then I go over it with a beauty blender because I think it really helps to blend it out and make it look not cakey by picking up anything that might be extra or too much. So, that's what it looks like. Just kind of get up close and personal to a mirror and really make sure that everything's all blended. See, it looks really nice on my skin and I do have dry skin. So I personally think that you can make any foundation work for you. If you just kind of, you can mix and match if you want to, but if you just work with what you have, you can make anything work for you. That's enough. So for highlighting and contouring, <laughs> just like flew onto my seat. Um, so basically, you want to use a concealer that is at least a shade lighter than your skin tone. So 
I highly recommend the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer, the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, and the Kat Von D Lock It Cream Concealer. Because I'm so pale, if I'm really looking, see, you can even see my the lightest shades of everything doesn't even match me. That's horrible. So, because I'm so fair, I don't, like if I use this Tarte and Fair, it's a really good shade for me. I can kind of just use that on a day-to-day -day basis. But if I'm really wanting the highlight and contour look, I will add a little bit of my whiteout concealer. So get something that's at least a shade lighter than your skin tone. And you want to put it under your eyes and on the high points of your face. So I'm going to put a little bit under my eyes because I'm also going to use the Kat Von D. But I'm only going to use the Kat Von D under my eyes. And then you want to put a little bit on the center of your forehead, down the bridge of your nose, and a little bit on your chin, and above your cupid's bow. Now this just like highlights the center of your face so when you contour it really brings the focus in and it brings a lot of light to your eyes and your face while making you look super slim. So then I just add a couple, now a little goes a long way with this concealer. Sometimes I put too much of this on and my face ends up looking white, but you can always fix it. But to me, this is the only way I can achieve like a really bright under eye. So then you just blend that in with your beauty blender. I think any beauty blender works. You don't have to spend $20 on a beauty blender in my opinion. This is a real text. Oh my god. Why do I say that? This is a Real Techniques brush. I need to go to sleep. So yeah, I got this one from Target. I think this was maybe $10. I don't know. I think I've never had a real um, beauty blender. But I honestly don't care because I don't see how there's a huge difference. I mean, it soaps up water and you dab it on your face. Now I do have to say this Kat Von D one is a little bit hard to blend out. You do have to work with it. But as you can see, it really brings a lot of light to my under eye area. Whereas if you were just to use your normal shade, or like a shade that basically matches your skin tone, it'll cover up your dark circles, but it doesn't like bring, it doesn't bring light to your under eye area. So that's why you want to use something a shade or two lighter. And you can decide how light you want to go. That just depends on how intense you want your highlight to be. Okay, so something that is super important is setting your concealer. Now, there's a difference between setting and baking. You don't have to bake, but if you're really going for this intense look, I kind of suggest baking. So setting it is just kind of keeping it from creasing, and you just press the powder in, until the powder is gone, basically. So, I picked up a little bit too much for that. So basically, that is setting. I picked up powder, I pushed it into my face, done. Baking is when you take up a crap ton of powder and you let it sit there. Now I guess this kind of um, traps your body heat and I guess bakes or cooks your concealer and your foundation underneath and makes it basically like invincible, like nothing can, <laughs> nothing can ruin it. That's what it is, I guess. Um, I've just always done it because that's what people say you should do. I don't know. But if you're going to be going out, maybe on the town, whatever you may be doing, and you're going to be wearing your makeup for a while, I would suggest baking because that is the best way to keep your makeup from moving, from sweating off, from budging, creasing, whatever you have problems with. So if you're doing an intense highlight and contour, I suggest baking your under eye area, not just setting it. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I suggest setting it because otherwise it's going to crease um, where you have any type of wrinkles or lines or anything like that. So that is the highlighting portion. Now, when it comes to contouring, it also has a lot to do with personal preference. My favorite way is to use the Anastasia Beverly Hills. When I would do just a powder contour, I kind of felt like I had a very muddy, patchy look. 
and I that might just be because my skin is kind of dry and sometimes it's hard for me to work with powders so I kind of just set my face a little bit just so that way it's not tacky and this will go on nicely and I use the Anastasia foundation contour shade stick it's in the shade shadow I think she has like a couple more of the shadow and highlight um if you want to check those out this is my favorite way of doing it I feel like it blends out super easily and um the way I do it is just the best way for it to not look patchy on my skin and I mean if you prefer not to use a a cream contour that's totally fine I felt that way for a really long time um, I thought it would like stick to my dry patches but it's weird that it turned out that this is the best thing for my dry skin I don't know it's it's weird so I just take my damp beauty sponge that I had been using and I do have to say to get this to blend out nicely you really do have to push and pull it's not like a, a nice little dab I have to kind of push it and that's fine you just gotta work with it a little bit I think it's worth it no matter what bronzer I use it just always looks orange on me really she just knocked over all of my powder um so no matter what I use it just always looks way too orange on my skin tone so personally I like using this contour stick and then another contour powder just to set it and to um, darken it almost. So you can just go over it with another contour powder or bronzer if that's what you choose to do. But I choose the Anastasia contour powder in the shade Fawn. And I just went, I just looked at her contour palettes and, um, I picked the lightest shade because I knew I wasn't going to use the whole palette. So this is $12 versus buying the whole palette with the six shades for $40-ish dollars I think it is. So this to me just seemed more worth it. So I just take a nice little tapered fluffy brush, tap off the excess, and then it's almost like I set that area. So that way it kind of smooths it out if there's any patchiness that I might have had, like blended it out kind of weird and there were some spots that were darker. Or whatever it may be I think this kind of evens it out a little bit and also just kind of defines the area even more so it's almost like the contour is kind of like my base and then I use the powder to intensify this is just my personal way of doing it I don't really think a lot of people do it this way to be honest so if you try this and it doesn't work for you that's totally okay um, there might just be a method that works better for you and you just might have to do a little bit more research to find it but for me I know I've had a lot of similar problems to you guys the ones that you've expressed to me so this just might help you a little bit and if it looks kind of weird you can always go over it with a beauty blender or with some face powder just to kind of lighten it whatever it may be now if your face is um, kind of dry or if your under eye area is dry, you don't have to let it bake as long as I did. That's totally up to you. You don't have to leave it on for that long in order for it to work. And you just kind of take your brush and kind of flick it away. And your under eye is set nicely. Um, and I also bake underneath my contour because um, sometimes uh, the powders and what you blend out can kind of go below the line that you want so you just take your beauty blender I think is the best way to do it for me for me personally and I take my powder and I kind of just carve out a line now you can really manipulate it to however you want it to go I go from the tip of my ear to the corner of my mouth and that's what works best for my face shape gives me a really nice um, cheekbone structure so that's just how I like to do it and I mean, even if you wiped it off right now you would see a difference I like to set my let mine sit for just a little bit to really give me a nice defined line so I think like this sometimes it can look kind of messy so I even if I don't really want I'm like playing with this even if I don't 
really want a really blushed look. I like to add a little bit because I think it helps kind of blend out everything on your face, whereas this would just kind of look weird if you walked around like this. So I'm going to use a light blush. Um, it's very buildable, but it doesn't go on heavy at all. So you could really build it up to any look you want. This is the Milani Powder Blush in Romantic Rose. I think it's so beautiful. And as you'll see when I put it on, it's not super pigmented. But it helps kind of just blend it all onto your face and make your contour look more natural. So it gives you a nice sharp line. Some people don't like the sharp contour. And if you don't, that's totally fine. Just go in with a lighter hand. You don't have to make it super intense or anything. It's totally personal preference. So I like to spray my face with my Mario Badescu Rose Water Spray before my highlight. And I use this so much. It's like my holy grail product just out of everything that I own. I can't live without it now. So I'm going to go in with my Moonchild palette and use the shade Pink Heart. I think I'm going to do kind of like a burgundy eye look. Um, like I said, I'm doing a cut crease. So I'm going to put this on the tip of my nose. Now if you don't want to, you don't have to. But I do think putting it on the bridge of your nose kind of helps blend in your contour and also makes your nose look thinner if that's what you want. Um, so I put some on the bridge of my nose. I leave a little bit of a space because this is where I like to put some of my contour to kind of give me like a button nose look. And then I'll put it kind of like on the tip top of my nose. I think it kind of helps make my nose look smaller. So while my face is still wet, I just go in right above my blush. And I like to go a little bit right here in the front. And how much you put on is totally up to you, but I think if you don't really like highlight, just kind of um, go to subtle with it, but I think it like gives such a nice glow to everyone's face. Like I think it brings life to the face and it helps blend in with the blush and the contour and kind of pulls the whole look together in my opinion. So if you don't like something super intense, you should go onto Ulta and get the Essence Highlight. Um, it's really beautiful. I don't use it that often <laughs> because it is really, really subtle. And I like, as you can see, something super intense. Like I go over and over and over my highlight until it's just really intense. So that is how I do my highlight and contour. Um, I'm getting better at it every day. I'm not super great at it, but I do think some of the tips that I've kind of found through trial and error are pretty helpful. So like I said, you know, I think kind of making sure you set it with a powder if you use a cream can really help keep it from looking kind of like patchy and muddy, really blend it out, um, and also do your contour according to your skin type. Let me move my giant mirror. So that's what it looks like. And as you can see, I'm really highlighted under my eyes, and I have a nice cheek contour that's kind of making my face look thinner and also brings some life to my face. Um, you don't have to contour your forehead if you don't want to. Um, I do kind of suggest putting a little bit of powder so that way it looks more natural because, you know, you're not going to have like this sharp, you're not going to have this really intense shadow on your face and then like nothing on your forehead. So I would suggest kind of trying to balance that out a little bit, but you don't have to do your forehead by any means. So it looks kind of crazy right now because I don't want my eyebrows or my makeup done. But I am going to go and do a cut crease, so if you're interested in that, check out my next video. She just jumped up onto my laptop. So yeah, I hope this helped you in any way. If you have any questions, please, please, please let me know. I think what you should really take away from this video is to use a primer, use a 
concealer that's at least a shade lighter than your skin tone. Make sure you set your face and your concealer, otherwise it will crease and it will fall and crack and crumble and just and just not look good in my opinion. That's just how I think, at least on my face. If I don't use it, I don't like how my face looks. So I think those are She's literally stepping on my laptop, my keyboard, licking the screen. Oh my gosh, I can't. So yeah, I think those are really good tips to take away from this. Yeah, I hope this helped you. I hope um, you can find some products that will work for you, like any of the ones that I mentioned. Um, like I said, if you don't want to spend a ton of money, um, I think getting an individual refill... Um, what do you call it, an individual refill powder could work really well for you and I think sometimes using a cream contour is easier in my opinion when I would use powders like I said it would just always turn out patchy so I think that's <laughs> the most advice I could give you guys and thank you guys so much for watching please let me know if this helped you out give me comments give me suggestions and please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe so thank you guys so so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video Bye.